YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video we all just came from watching the presser that featured John Harbaugh uh, Chuck Clark and also Ronnie Stanley before we get into it quick word of advice and it's something that I got to keep working on myself uh, with negative energy sometimes you might get a text from somebody and you just know as soon as you see that name pop up it's gonna be some negative energy you might see a tweet from somebody a comment something and you just know every time you see that name, it's like, uh, you know, or even for the first time, if it's somebody new and they bring that negative energy, it can be very hard not to respond to it. But word of advice, block and move on, block and move on. You don't have to put yourself through tolerating that block and move on. Um, so it just it, it helps with everything, because if you continue to entertain it, if you go back and forth even if you prove your point and get your point across like, oh, yeah, I proved them right. It's, it's not going to be a good feeling at the end of the day. And it's a waste of time. Anyway, um, John Harbaugh started this presser off confirming uh, the season ending injuries to both Marcus Peters uh, and Gus Edwards. And he said that uh, with Gus Edwards, he made a cut and he landed the wrong way. That was it. Just landed the wrong way. Uh, and he, with Marcus Peters, he was pivoting on a turn that he makes all the time. And it's just something that ended up happening. Uh, with Nick Boyle, they said that he's going to be going on injury reserve. Uh, Short-term IR, obviously. So he's going to be out for the next three weeks, at least. Um, so he joins Rashad Bateman and also Miles Boykin. Uh, so hopefully those guys can be ready be be even before it's time for them to come back. Uh, so they can be, like, extra healthy. Um, because those are some significant blows to the team. Because they all figure to contribute some way, somehow. Of course, Nick Boyle, one of the better blocking tight ends in the league with a set of underrated hands. Miles Boykin, uh, one of the be better blocking wide receivers in the league, and especially with this Ravens strong running game. You need people like that. Um, and then with Rashad Bateman, he figured to get in the, on the action as a receiver for the Ravens. Um, but when those guys come back, hey, you know, we're going to welcome them with open arms. Now, uh, somebody who is going to be really pushed up to the forefront um, due to injuries is Anthony Averett. Anthony Averett uh, is a guy who's been on this Ravens team for a little while. Um, and the more that he's played, uh, in my opinion, the more that he's played, the more comfortable he's looked. I know early on when he first would come out into the games and whatnot, he had that number, what was it, number 23 back then. Um, sometimes it would, it would be a struggle. It would be a struggle, but he was younger, uh, inexperienced, and, and he was behind so much. So in practice, you can get all these reps in practice and whatnot, but it's nothing like the actual game. And when you're behind the Marcus Peters, behind the Marlon Humphrey, behind the Jimmy Smith, behind the Tavon Young, behind the Brandon Carr, behind even more, when you're behind all those guys, it can be really hard for you to really get in a groove and really find that rhythm. So with Anthony Avery, something that I noticed when I watched him from last year is that the more he was out there, the better he looked. The more he was out there, the more comfortable he looked. The more he was out there, the more confident he looked. And Ravens, they certainly expressed a lot of confidence in Anthony Avery. They've been expressing confidence in him this entire offseason. Of course, Wink, right? y'all remember a couple weeks ago when Wink said, hey, Anthony Avery, he's been our th the third best corner on this team. Third best corner. So obviously behind Marlon Humphrey, obviously behind Marcus Peters, and then boom, the third best corner. And that's, that's high praise. And again, just to give y'all a quick reminder, y'all remember when I, I thought that when they were saying that, I thought they were just pushing his name up in trade talks. They were just trying to get more value for him. And that could have actually still been the case because just because they traded away uh, Sean Wade, it doesn't mean that he was the only person that the Ravens may have been making calls about or getting calls for. But anyway, um, now it's time for him to live up to it. And in this presser, John Harbaugh, he gave Anthony Averett another boost, uh, uh, another recommendation, too. Um, and he said that they're confident in him. They're confident in Anthony Averett. Uh, Chuck Clark, he said the same thing, too. And with Chuck Clark, he talked about how it's, it's next man up. Whether it's due to injury, whether it's due to trade, whether it's due to somebody being cut, it's always next man up. And that's exactly what it is, man. He said all them boys are rocking with Anthony Averett. Uh, and with him, he is going to be thrust into the limelight, right? Like literally into the limelight because the lights are on for Monday Night Football. Your, your first game as a start, you're starting the season. You're not just stepping in real quick or just for a little bit. You're not just stepping in to give somebody a little quick breather. No, you are starting. You're the starting cornerback this season, Anthony Averett. 
It's all on you, man. And that is a lot of pressure. And you know, passes are going to come his way. Because people are going to look over at Marlon Humphrey. They're going to be like, oh, I don't know about that one. Oh, let's attack the, the young guy. Y'all, hey, go hit up 34. Go get him. So he got to be ready. He's got to be ready. And you know the Ravens, one thing that they're very good at is when it, when it comes to developing cornerbacks. That is one of their specialties. They had, some, had a lot of hits, had some misses here and there, but they've had a lot of hits at the cornerback position. So with Anthony Averitt, he'll be fine. Again, his biggest struggle, uh, in my opinion, is just not making a play on the ball. That, that has been his biggest struggle uh, throughout the entirety of his career, even during this offseason. We've seen some videos and whatnot, some training camp videos where Anthony Avery would be right there, but just wouldn't make the play on the ball. Even in some preseason games, we've seen it too. Um, so hopefully that uh, definitely improves. But with experience, uh, with more opportunity, it should. It should. And I'm not just sitting up here saying it like j just to get y'all extra hyped or anything, but that's the way that stuff works. How can you get better at something how can you get better at a physical activity from just watching videos of it, from just reviewing it on an iPad? How, how can you possibly get better at a, at a physical activity from just watching stuff? on? You can't. It's impossible. You have to actually get out there and do it. So with Anthony Averitt, yeah, he's obviously going through the physical activity and practice and whatnot, but in the real games, it's a whole other atmosphere. So he's going to have to get out there and do it. Yes, there are going to be some growing pains. There will be. There have been already, and there will be some more. But Marlon Humphrey, remember when Marlon Humphrey first got drafted? Was he this lockdown cornerback? Now nah, he wasn't giving up no touchdowns. I'll give you that. But with the deep ball, he struggled with it. And sometimes he even still struggles with the deep ball. He struggles with locating the ball on a deep ball. And maybe now that I think about it, it could be an Alabama thing. I would have to really just do some research on some other Alabama corners to justify that. But... As far as the Alabama corners on the Ravens, maybe it's just a, a thing with them. But is Marlon Humphrey considered bad, a bad corner? No, he's one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And you can make a case that he is the best cornerback in the league since he can play both outside and inside and play both at a high level. Nobody's really saying that. But anyway, with Anthony Averitt, I'm, I'm not worried about him. Even if in the Raiders game, oh, he gives up a play or two. I, I, I'm not worried about him in the long term, in the long run, because this Ravens defense, it, it, it'll be fine. He'll get it. So I'm just I, I know that there's going to be a lot of balls that come his way. And I just I can't wait until because I know I know my guy Garnett talked about a lot with Alabama corners. They, they play the player instead of playing the ball. They play the receiver instead of playing the ball. They make sure that the receiver doesn't catch it instead of trying to make a play for the ball as far as interceptions or whatnot. But I just know that, and I can't wait for, yeah, Anthony Avery, he gets caught on a couple of times, but you know, the, <coughs> excuse me, them quarterbacks are going to keep coming at him. So when he gets that first interception, after them quarterbacks keep trying, it's going to be a beautiful thing. I can't wait, man. Um, so we'll see how everything goes. And then, of course, everybody behind them, they got to take another step forward, too. Now, with uh, Anthony Averitt, um, one of the biggest things to think about, and not just him, but with the entire team, is your depth. And your depth is very, very questionable. Uh, it's quality, but it's questionable quality. Because behind Anthony Averitt, you have Jimmy Smith, starting caliber cornerback, all pro caliber cornerback, lockdown caliber cornerback, but an injury-prone caliber cornerback. And we love Jimmy Smith. You already know we do. Jimmy Smith is a monster. Amazing at his job. But we just know, like, it's, it's in the back of every Ravens fan's mind when it comes to Jimmy Smith. It's like we know what he can do. We know how he can play. But we also know about the injury history. And it's the same exact way with Tavon Young. It's like these guys are some high-quality cornerbacks. Man, these dudes can ball out. But we know about the injury history. And every single time they step on the field, it's going to be in the back of our minds, whether you want it to or not. Every single time they step on the field, it's going to be in the back of coaches' minds, whether they want it to be or not. If they go down, if they make a tackle on somebody, ah, oh, just please get up. Come on, please get up. Don't be hurt. And it sucks that it's like that way, but it's the truth. It's the truth. You, you, you fear for injury with these guys because they face so much injury throughout their entire careers. But when they've been healthy, they've been ballers. 
Ballers. So we obviously hope that these guys can stay healthy the entire season, man. Because they deserve it. Jimmy Smith deserves it. Tavon Young deserves it. They deserve health, man. Because they just, they've they been through it. And the Ravens, you know Ravens really love these guys because both of them got second contracts with the Ravens. Despite having injury history from the jumps of their careers. And Jimmy Smith even got a third contract. He's, he's been, spent his entire career with the Ravens. Entire career. So, and I think he actually got a fourth too. So, shout out to, uh, to Jimmy Smith. And shout out to Tavon Young. Tavon Young been somebody who we, we have not been hearing much from this offseason. But sometimes no news is better than, than, than any news, really. So, shout out to Tay-Tay. Anyway, some other things that um, Harbaugh talked about. Uh, somebody asked him uh, as a head coach. Uh, they, they asked him, since you've been here 14 years. And I was like, whoa. He been head coach that long? And I think it's actually, I think this is actually year 13 because he started coming, started coaching. He came to the Ravens in um, 2008. Him and Flacco, they came together. Well, he obviously drafted Flacco. Um, and yeah, so it's 2021 now. So that's 13 years, man. So that's pretty cool, man. He's he been around a long time. Long time. Did not realize that. Uh, they asked him about... Um, the shape uh, of the running backs, how he felt about the running backs that they, they signed. And with, with Latavius Murray, I was getting ready to say DeMarco Murray, but with Latavius Murray, he said he's in football shape since he's been to training camp and all that, so he should be good to go. Uh, he said the same thing about Devontae Freeman, but he said with well, Le'Veon Bell, he's in shape, but he's not in football shape. So he got to get uh, a little more in a football shape, and that'll come with time. Uh, with the running backs, he also talked about how they, especially the ones that are already in football shape, the biggest thing with them is now getting getting them up to speed with the playbook. They have like two days of practice. They got today. Uh, they got Saturday. They probably going to fly out Sunday, maybe Saturday night. Um, no, they, well, let's see. Whenever they fly out, they're going to fly out. And then, yeah, Monday. It's, it'll be it'll be here before you know it. I know a lot of y'all are like, oh, man, it's taking so long. It's Monday night football. We got to wait for the Sunday night games, too. And then, oh, uh, yeah. It'll, it'll be here before you know it. I promise you. I, I, pr I promise you, man. Um, he also talked about Chris Westry. Because, again, he, he steps up now. His role has increased. Mentioned uh, Ardarius Washington and Brandon Stevens as well. Brandon Stevens, um, that's been a name that I just, I've been forgetting about a lot. And not due to him, because he's been playing good. Especially we saw him in a preseason game. Um, but it's just due to my own terrible memory. Uh, but with him, he's somebody that you're going to be able to. And, and we saw previews of it in that first in the, and actually all the preseason games. But he's going to be somebody you can move around. You can do a lot of things with him. And again, you know, with the Ravens, it's all about the more you can do, the more you can do. With Wink, the more you can do on defense, Wink like, let's go. With Harbaugh, the more you can do on special teams, Harbaugh like, let's go. With Greg Roman, the more you can do on offense, he like, oh, man, how should I use this guy? But hopefully that improves this year. Again, shout out to TT and Kiki. Y'all know them boys got to come through for us, please. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, and with Boyle, somebody asked about the uh, why. why. What, what's going on with Boyle to where he's not going to be able to play uh, this week and you guys are putting him on injury reserve for the next three weeks. What, what, what's happening with Boyle and Harbaugh? I ain't, I ain't getting into that. A petty Harbaugh came out. But I was like, all right, cool. I ain't, ain't got no problem with it. Uh, Chuck Clark, um, his, it was brief. Usually with Chuck Clark, it's brief. I think Chuck Clark is so tired of talking into the media. Chuck Clark just seemed like he want to be over. He like, man, I, mm, yeah, I, I answer a few, few questions, but I, I got to go. I want to go. I don't want to be here. Um, but he talked about with MP, Marcus Peters. He said it's, it's not too much that you can say to somebody who's going through something like that. Uh, but he said also from their point of view, it's not too much that they can hear either. So that, that, that just makes things really tough. He said you just got to wish them the best um, and look forward to when they can be back with the team again. So uh, Ronnie Stanley, he also spoke to the media. Um, and he said uh, when you're injured, because they asked him, like, what kind of advice or pointers can he give to the guys that are hurt? And he said uh, when you're injured, you can, also, you can also feel like you're isolated from everybody. And... That can, um, that can get you really frustrated, uh, but you can only control what you can control, and you got to try to look at all the positives with everything. And that can be hard. That's what we always talk about with, with injuries. 
it can it messes with your mental just as much as it does your physical. It's t- it's tough. It's tough. And something that we said earlier, one of the most and this is not even just for football. This is just life. Period. I've been through situations like that. I know you've been through situations like that. The most frustrating situations are the ones that you just cannot do anything about. You know how frustrating it is. You know the problem, but it just is something that cannot be solved right away. Eventually it can, but you just know like right here, right now, you can't do anything. And that that, that makes it that much tough. Tougher, excuse me. Uh, Ronnie Stanley also talked about how the end of practice yesterday it was depressing. He said it was depressing, but today they had a newfound energy, and they'll they'll have to be even better uh, for the guys that they lost. And that's true. Everybody got to step up that much more. If you lose somebody, you got to step up that much more. You got to come that much more that much harder, man. Um, he also talked about that he's happy about the guys that they brought in, and he said that the uh, the guys that are injured. They need to know and remember that they may be injured and away from the team, but they're not abandoned. So that was important, man. So he's just letting the guys know Marcus Peters, uh, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Justice, everybody, man. I'm so tired of saying that list because that list is just it's so long and it's so significant, too. But he said that those guys need to know that they are not abandoned. They may be away from the team for a little bit, but they still part of the team. Uh, anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, question from subscribers. We're probably going to be doing those, whether it be today or tomorrow. So y'all look out for that. Uh, any new Team Keep It Clean patrons, which I appreciate a lot, uh, you will see your names on the updated uh, Team Keep It Clean patron list uh, when we do drop an episode of Question from Subscribers, which, again, should be over the next couple of days. Um, I appreciate y'all. Thank you all for rocking with all the videos and showing just major support. Uh, especially over these past couple of days. Uh, shout out to any new subscribers here. Welcome to Team Keep It Clean. Um, and, and if you're a Ravens fan, great. If you're not a Ravens fan, still great. Come through. Share your opinion on whatever it is that we're talking about. You're more than welcome to, too, man. Um, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Uh, and I will see you all later on. We out.